noise there. A lot of this noise is directly related to power harmonics. Anything related to power harmonics, you can ignore. What I'm going to do is we're going to take a look at stator mechanical. So I have 58 stator, uh, I'm sorry, I have, uh, sorry, 72, pardon me, 72 stator slots. And I'm running at an RPM. of 29.779 hertz. That means that I will have a center frequency of 72 times 29.779, okay, 2144.08, .088. Now, if I have a, uh, a stator problem, like, for instance, those loose coils, I will then come up here and I will see, um, I will add plus 60 hertz, which will give me 2204.088 minus 120 hertz. 2084.088. Now I can look for peaks in that range. So 2204 to here. So I'm going to look down in this range right here. Okay. And let's look for a peak at about 2084. Okay. 2084. That looks like such a peak right there. Let's see where it is. That is at 2086.3. Probably close enough. Let's take a look and see if we can find something at 2204, which would be right about here. Twenty two oh seven, that next one beside it might be. Not gonna wake up for me. There we go. Well in any case. So I've got a couple of peaks close to that. For the sake of anything, I'm just going to pop that up there. Okay. Now let's get back into here. Okay, so this peak here and this peak here, that smaller peak, there it is, 2204, would indicate stator mechanical. Now those actually indicate for me, and the peaks are at uh, 89 dB down, but through a CT, so they're actually probably going to be fairly high. You should normally not see these peaks at all. Um, but as we saw in the pictures, those peaks actually indicate uh, movement of the coils during operation. How do you detect the difference? Well, if you have a motor commissioning program, what you do right from the beginning is you take a snapshot of your machine, you would indicate stator mechanical, um, and then you'll watch to see if it changes. If it changes, if these peaks begin to rise uh, in dB, which is less affected by load than looking at it in current, if you monitor it in dB, if you see them begin to rise, that means that they're becoming looser. Now, if you don't have these signatures early on, um, and later on you see these peaks come up, chances are very good what you're seeing is something causing the coils to become loose in the slots themselves. That can happen over time due to shrinkage of the insulation system uh, or if the machine was not properly manu uh, manufactured or repaired and uh, is basically glued into the slot and it comes loose later on. 
Any questions so far? I keep, I'm keeping most of you, so I'm assuming that uh, this is interesting. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to cover um, – oh, let's go back up here to number four. Now, we knew from from uh, history and everything else in these particular machines that these issues had been from the manufacturer. Now, this one here – let me get rid of this. Cleaner sine wave, if you have severe problems, you'll see them as notches in the current. Okay, similar machine, same model number and everything else. Let's take a look at standard mechanical. And I have peaks that may relate to it. One slightly to the left of SM2, and one slightly to the left of SM1. Now, these uh, little red and green peaks at the bottom, those are indications of harmonics of the line frequency. Normally, you don't spend a lot of time looking at those. So if any of these peaks had landed over line frequency, I wouldn't have been as concerned. Now, just for fun, we're going to take a quick look at a DC machine. Now, we're going to look at the uh, incoming power up to the uh, up to the uh, uh, DC drive itself. And as you can see, there's a little bit of stuff in there, and, uh, and so on, and so on, and so on. Whenever I'm dealing with a variable frequency drive or a DC drive or any type of power electronics that takes and converts me from power from one way to a different way, um, that is an infinite point. That means that anything that I am looking at here has nothing to do with the operation of the electric machine. All I'm looking at is everything upstream up to the point of the drive itself. So I look at high frequency data. It will also allow me to look at, if I'm taking on the uh, line side of this DC drive, I can see the effects of variations within the drive itself. Um, this is top one is current, bottom one is voltage. You can see the notching and so on. If I want to take a look at the actual DC motor, I will come down here, take a look at my DC machine itself. There's the power coming in, and you'll notice that it looks at a, that like it's about zero or very close to zero amps, very low current. This is actually a, a machine that takes a lot of current. I measure my current going to DC machines in terms of, uh, I'm sorry, using AC amperopes. ACTs allow you to look at the little ripple at the peak of the uh, DC current, and that little ripple is what you actually analyze versus the, um, the uh, overall current. That will have a tendency to dampen it a little bit. But right now I'm looking at the actual DC machine. In DC machines, the main areas you're going to detect things, and I'm just going to do a quick introduction to this. If you want to know how the drive is operating, you look to the left, you can see current on top, voltage on the bottom. This is actually sets of six firings. We're actually looking at that ripple. Uh, the ripple is also maybe noted on the, um, on the nameplate as the form factor. Okay. So you see it's varying about 15 amps across time. This is in a loaded machine. Um, and here's the voltage down below, the notching. This is actually the notching that's occurring as the, as the uh, SCRs are firing. What I should see in my frequency on the right-hand side here, 